everyone, welcome to The Withering Effect, episode 103. Today's date is July 11th, 2021, and I am Duds, or Duds versus known to the rest of the interwebs. And I'm Jimbo. You may know me as Jimbo Slice 23 So what have you been up to this week, Duds? Need sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> I've tried. Need a nap. So you guys are going to get a tiny bit of sports talk. I promise I'll keep it really short just to explain my uh, sleeping thing. So I'm a huge hockey fan. I'm a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, and they were in the Stanley Cup Finals. They were one game away from sweeping in the finals on Monday. They ended up losing that game in overtime, and games generally last till about 11 p.m. anyways. So the fact that it went to overtime mean the game was on even later, and then we lost. So basically, I was upset and angry with the world all night and barely got any sleep. The next day comes around, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to bed extra early today. We'll make up for the sleep. All will be well. Climb in bed at 9 p.m. I'm like, this is great. 2 a.m., my eyes are wide open. I can't fall asleep to save my life. You got those hockey voices in the back of your head, announcers. It really wasn't even the hockey at this point. It was just brain couldn't turn off, so I couldn't fall asleep. Wednesday rolls around. We have the next hockey game. This is game five. My team wins the game, one nothing. I had my little uh, Fitbit thing that does your heart rate, and uh, my heart rate never went below 99 the entire game. Mm. And then they won the game, so I stayed up watching all the celebration stuff, so I didn't sleep again Wednesday night. <laughs> and then Thursday and Friday, I slept relatively close to what I normally get. I generally only get about six hours of sleep every night, and I kind of stayed right at that, but that also means I never recovered from any of my missing sleep. And basically all weekend, I've done nothing but lounge around, and it, it's hurting. Mm, starting to feel it now. I'm, I'm starting to feel it now, and the worst part is we're doing a late recording tonight instead of our normal 10 a.m. recording. So it's like, as soon as we're done, I'm going to bed. <laughs> you might fall asleep mid-show. You never know. I might. If you guys just hear Jimbo talk for the rest of the episode, I passed out. Yeah, I'll try to keep us going. <laughs> keep it going. I'll try. See, I've, I've been having sleep issues lately because I've been working mm -hmm. out, going to the gym, and I'm supposed to get like eight hours, I said, for the best you know, muscle growth or whatever. Mm -hmm. You need to get your eight hours of sleep. And I would sleep like four hours, wake up, like wide awake yeah and then i'd have to like force myself to go back to sleep but i'd have to i'd have to get up i'd have to do something and get tired again to go back to sleep so my sleep's not all there but i'm still trying to i'm maintaining like six to seven hours at night but yeah it's mine's all wonky too yeah sleep lately is i think it's more to do with brain than anything else that uh, there's personal stuff going on in my life that has me relatively stressed that'll do it that's it's stuff I don't really want to talk about, so we'll leave it at that. But mixing with hockey, the hockey was a great bit of relief this week. I'm super happy, so that helps me with that. Mm -hmm. But other than uh, non Minecraft stuff, I did a glow squid farm last week that I was super excited with. It was based off a raise work farm, but the raise work farm didn't work. Now, he may have updated it since, but it basically had a tank with flowing water on one side uh, that whenever an oxalotl would kill a glow squid, the items would obviously float to the top, and the flowing water on the top level would push the glow ink over or in between a wall and a drop. So the oxalotls couldn't get through the drop, but obviously the items could. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is... People have seen, if you watched my last episode with Tucker and stuff, oxalotls get stuck on walls. Yeah, it's weird. They do not move. When they, when they kiss the wall, they're done. You physically have to push them away from the wall. So I had all these oxalotls in there, and they all got stuck on walls. They would never swim away from the wall. I think I saw someone do a farm. like It's probably the same farm, and he had the same issue. can't remember who yeah. it was. I ended up fixing it. So if you go to the Wikipedia, you can see the hitbox of an oxalotl is actually 0.6 or just above half, uh, half a block tall. 
So what you can do is you can replace the walls with stairs because the item will still flow under the stairs because remember the hitbox for a stair actually conforms to the stair now. Yeah. So the item will flow under the stair, but the oxalotl obviously can't fit. I think you could you could probably get away with doing a half slab, now to think about it. Yeah. Um, but I well, it all depends on how you set up because a half slab and item might be able to slip all the way across. But anyway, yeah. So I did a stair, ended up fixing it. That's what I had on me. So I went with that. A half slab probably would work there too. Not a trap door. Don't try trap doors. But it works? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay. the pickup mechanism works beautifully. Flawless. Uh, chef's kiss right there. The problem is, and this is kind of my fault, but also I'm going to gripe about parity differences here. Uh, I'm sure Prowl will enjoy this. <laughs> I built my farm in a warm ocean because my entire base is in a warm ocean. And you know what spawns in warm oceans? Not really. Puffer fish. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I went, well, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. The puffer fish will sting the oxalotls. The oxalotls will go into their little sleepy state, regen their health, and then go kill the puffer fish. So now I've got a puffer fish farm at the same time. Awesome. Now, those puffer fish hit the oxalotls, and when the oxalotls give up and go into their little sleep state, they attack them some more until they kill them. Mm, I know they get poisoned too, so that might be taking them out while they're trying to regen. But I didn't know the puffer fish would attack, probably yep. because... The axolotl is attacking. I thought it was just coincidence, and then I went into a creative world. Watch an axolotl attack a puffer fish, go into sleep mode, float away from the puffer fish, and then the puffer fish literally 180'd and came right at the axolotl. Oh, wow. I went, man, Enemies. those things are mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And right now, I can't think of a way. They're, I can build the farm differently. Uh, you know, the normal drop the squid mm -hmm. and kill them that way. Yeah. I thought about doing that. The problem is that you have to have the natural stone. So redoing the farm is a little difficult because I purposely dug the tank out to fit the pickup mechanism so I can maximize the amount of naturally generated stone in the area. Mm -hmm. So I have that issue. That stone, does it got to be under them? Or is it just anywhere around them? I thought it had to just be under them, but I didn't take the chance, so I made sure it was all around them. Yeah. was natural, hoping to increase rates. Because the other thing, if you do a drop farm, then you don't have the stone within five blocks under them. Because obviously you have to drop them from at least 20 blocks. I was thinking magma. Magma blocks. You put those down there, they would just, you know, burn on the magma block. I thought about that too. I don't know. I'll have to go into a test world and see if they'll spawn that way because that yeah. honestly is the easiest fix. Mm -hmm. But if you look for glow squid farms, not a single person's done that. And it's like, that's what I noticed. Well, why wouldn't somebody do that? This seems like the easy fix. I have a little area outside my base where I got my glow squid for my tank. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, man, if I just put magma blocks down here i could collect that i would you know it would take care of the axolotls you know if anyone would need those you couldn't get those but mm -hmm. i could collect the glow squid but i don't know if it needed stone under them yeah so wasn't sure even with the little bit of lighting up on this farm this farm was working really well till all the puffer fish just started killing my axolotls so that stinks and i have puffer fish in my thing but no axolotls so they're kind of yeah mingling with the squid and the other fish mm -hmm. yeah my other fish tank has puffer fish in it too but i didn't put any axolotls in there because they would just eat everything mm -hmm. uh but finally i started work on a section of my mountain called fisherman's cove i'm really excited for that that's a lot of fun um it's very much in the beginning stages right now so i don't have a lot to talk about that but yeah I'm pretty happy with how this week's coming Minecraft-wise with the little bit of sleep I've had. How about you? What have you been up to? Before I go uh, go on with my progress, which isn't too much, I just want to say that Fisherman's Cove is looking good. I like the moss that you put on there. That's going to look pretty cool. I see. Now I'm confused because there's no moss in Fisherman's Cove. You put it above it. 
That's the pirate skate. Okay. We talked about that last week. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But yes, I like the moss on top of the pirate skate. I thought that was your cove. Nope. Cove's on the backside. You got to walk around. Ah, uh, it's on the mountain though. Yes. Right? Okay. I was getting confused there. There's a whole path and everything now. Okay. Let's see all that. But I have done no recording on Minecraft. GG. I have been playing, but it's mainly just like base progress, and it's only like when I have time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stream a lot of my progress if I'd be on for a couple hours or so, depending on the time. I've noticed there's times where I would stream and I would only get like few viewers, you know, four or mm -hmm. five viewers. I'm like, let I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to try to do it at a decent time. And uh, those times, I mainly, I'm mainly at the gym, and uh, that's what I've been doing lately. I've been working out, and I'm almost got this dad bod gone. Mm -hmm. Like maybe another month, and I'll be feeling a lot better. But yeah, I've been just uh, trying to diet, trying to get back in shape. I'm feeling a lot better, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm need to record some Minecraft. That's for sure. But I got a lot of base progress done, a lot of glass placement. Like, I've dug out the whole Sahara Desert at this point. Yeah, I know. All the sand near my base is, like, gone. Yeah, I took it. I got it. Well, speaking of streaming, I don't know if people got the message. I put out a notice, like, I basically have stopped streaming for a bit, um, mainly because I was getting burned out, and it, it was becoming really hard juggling streaming and doing episodes. And the YouTube channel has actually been doing really well lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least for my standards, for anyone who has a decent sized channel, this is childish, but it, it was doing well. So everyone who's been watching and stuff, thank you so much for the sport. It means a ton. So I wanted to focus in on that. And I kind of felt it was time to do some updates on the stream, especially since I have the new computer. Some of the uh, widgets and stuff have broken and I haven't had time to fix them. So yeah, I took a little bit of a break also. I think I'm streaming on stream day this coming weekend for everyone hearing. Mm-hmm. I'm kicking it off, actually. There you go. 7 a.m. my time. Yeah, other than that, I've kind of also taken a break from the streaming to focus on YouTube, especially now that sports seasons are off for me to, like, September. I'll have a lot more time to dedicate to my channels and stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. What's funny is I got, for my birthday, I got a stream deck. Mm -hmm. I haven't messed with it at all. It's kind of just sitting there. Dude, I use the stream deck more for editing than I do anything else. Oh. Yeah, like I've got it set up so it, it'll it automatically open my editing program. It The way I do an episode is I've got a folder called add-ons and I've got a folder called clips. And basically those two folders are linked to the stream deck. So I just go in there, I go boop, 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 and I open everything. And then the add-ons are the same every single week. And I just copy and paste that over into the current clips folder and then edit all my episode in that folder. And then when it's done, rename the folder uh, to the episode name, and then do all the stuff there. But yeah, I it it's being used for streaming, but I end up using it more for editing just because of the hotkeys. Yeah, heard about the hotkeys. That's pretty much what it is. It's like a hotkey pad. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's, that's a good point. Didn't really think about it for using it just in use for general, or general use for editing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. But if that's all you got, should we move on to the news? Yeah, it's everything. All right. So we told you guys last week, 117.1 should have come out, and it did come out. Uh, we'll quickly go over some of the stuff that happened. We got blue axolotls can now be gotten through breeding. That used to not be a thing. It used to be a super rare chance for you to find one. But now it's a super rare chance you can breed one. Mm -hmm. So Still super rare. Still super rare. And if we're going to stay on Super Rare, stay might as well rare. talk about the uh, Screaming Goats. So a non-Screaming Goat parent has a Super Rare chance of breeding a Screaming Goat. Still Super Rare. Still Super Rare. <laughs> uh, you can also add status effects to goats now. So if you do the jumping effect, uh, th the goat will jump even higher, which is crazy because goats already jump super high. Yeah. Pretty, it's pretty fun, though, to see. The big one for me is the copper rates from Drowned have been increased. Yeah, pretty big. <sighs> it's going to be really nice. And I've, I'm in love with Tango's copper farm. 
And I know he's giving a lot of credit to like El Mango and stuff because he's taking, he took like several different farms and kind of mashed them together to create his own. Mm -hmm. But man, copper farms in general are just fun to watch. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to it, a lot more than you would think. Yeah. Like the spawning mechanics of the mm -hmm. drowned and the zombies. It, it is pretty cool. The best part is it's not super complicated redstone. No. It's just knowing the exploits for spawning and taking advantage of it. So that's really cool. It's like all mechanics. Just take advantage of the mechanics. Yeah, basically. Pretty cool. Uh, powder snow will fill a cauldron two times faster now, but that's still pretty slow. Yeah. Haven't even thought about messing with powdered snow, really. Me neither. I have like a mountain right outside my swamp. Mm -hmm. There's a mountain like right there. I could always go and put cauldrons there, but I'm, I don't have a need for it, really. I kind of have my base set. Same. To where it needs to be. And yeah, I don't, I might, I might grab some for like the storage area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to end up using any. I wonder if powdered snow, though, can be a precursor to quicksand. Yeah. Thinking about it. That's one thought. It's pretty similar. Uh, and the final kind of big change is zombie, zombie villagers, husk, and drowned will no longer pick up glow ink sacks. And that's because you'd have glow squids in caves, would get shoved out of the water because a lot of caves are all spaghetti noodly, and the zombies and stuff would pick it up and then never despawn. So... And I believe when they have it, I don't know if it's an optifine thing, but you would have a glow from that ink sac. Uh, I think that's an optifine thing. Yeah. Because glow ink is not technically supposed to glow, or I should mm -hmm. say emit light. I know the squid does, like in the water before optifine. The squid would glow a little bit, or am I mistaken? Uh, it's So it says it's glow. And it looks like it's glowing, but technically, I don't think the squid emits light at all. I think it's just a nifty trick with textures to make it look like it's glowing. Okay. If that makes sense, because a lot of people were like, why doesn't this sign emit light? I put glow ink on it, because that's what I thought originally glow ink was going to do also. But no, it, it doesn't do that. Yeah. Think of it as a highlighter. That's what glow ink is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just remember seeing them, and it would... I could actually find them by noticing there's light in that cave and I would go swim into that cave and there's a there's a glow squid because of the light it emitted through the uh the stone that it was around. That's how I found quite a few of them. But that could be an optifine thing. I don't even think it's an optifine thing. I've seen it. But I might I might be wrong. It's the same effect they use with the uh what's the arrow? Spectral arrow? Spectral arrow. Yeah, it's basically a spectral arrow built into a mob. So it's not emitting light, but it's glowing. That makes sense. I don't want to confuse people because I, I know people are going to get a bit confused. Yeah, someone's yelling at us right now telling us how it works. You know that. Yeah, the easiest way I can explain it is it's like a highlighter. It looks like it's producing light, but it is not emitting light. Mm -hmm. That's a good example. All right, but that's kind of it for the news. Like we were saying in the uh, pre-show, there's kind of a Minecraft content drought. And I know that's really weird saying with an absolute ton of SMPs starting over and stuff. It, news wise, news, newsworthy content is, a, is in a drought. Yeah, oh, I did see on Twitter today that Minecraft Dungeons has like a, an end update coming, mm -hmm. like an addition to there. But that's about yes. it. They only showed like a picture of the end portal. Not much game, there no gameplay, actually, but... Yeah. Yeah, stay tuned for that, I guess. Yeah, me and Jimbo have decided at some point we will end up purchasing Dungeons and playing it, and so we'll have a, a good episode about Dungeons, and maybe what we liked from Dungeons, what we want to see from Dungeons in Minecraft. So, that could be fun. Mm -hmm. But, should we move on to listener comments? Yeah, we got, a quite, we got quite a few here. Yeah, I'll start with a comment from Dirty Blonde 655 they ask, other than inventory update, what update do you think Minecraft needs most? This is a pretty popular question. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to answer first, I, I agree the inventory update needs to be at the top of the list. But I'd also like them to look at food. Uh, good buddy Omni 
uh, did an episode talking about foods in Minecraft, and it's very much worth the watch. So shout out to Omni, but I believe the food system in the game definitely needs a rework. It's very lacklustering. What how you lackluster? There we go. Especially now that trading with villagers is so OP, you can just trade for golden carrots from farmers. I still do the steak thing because I felt like the steak took more work, but you also got a good reward in the fact that you got leather. Yeah. But uh, once you get out of that, I mean, you can do cooked pork chops, pork, yeah, pork chops, words, pork chops with the hoglin farms. But those are just so easy, and I didn't want to take an easy way this this season. Yeah, but other than those three, there's really nothing to eat in the game worth any kind of time or effort. What about you, Jimbo? What do you think needs to be improved the most? I'm I'm not big on the food update okay i i actually mentioned that before i think i'm okay with the food like the like the pork chop thing easier the better for me if i can get them Mm -hmm. easier i know it's fun to play with different mechanics and stuff but yeah i mean the the pork chops you get in the nether i think is the way to go at this point because again you do get the leather it's easy and the pork chops it's you know it gives you four hearts or what four food and the saturation isn't very bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's three foods that really stand out. Like you said, the steak, the golden carrots, and the pork chops. That's pretty much it. Um, the other ones aren't really all that reliable, but I don't know. I'm I'm okay with the food. All right. But I would like to see an end update. That's what I would like to see. I think being in the end this season, flying around, especially after being in the nether of how full of life it is now, you know, the end, it's full of life, all right. It's definitely full of life, Enderman, everywhere. You know, it'd be nice to have different mobs and maybe some rare island biomes that we've never seen before. And I really like the fact that the end is an area that's not really, doesn't really go with what we're, what we see in normal life. Like you have the overworld and uh, you have your animals and stuff. The end can be anything. Because it's not really, it's like a different dimension. So mm-hmm. it could be real fun to see what kind of mobs they come up with there and plants and different structures. You already see the shulker boxes or the shulkers in the, the end cities, how, you know, goofy it looks. And I don't know, they they kind of got the same structure with that in the plants with the coarse, fr- coarse fruits, the way it grows and stretches out, kind of like a branch type of deal. But yeah, it's just different. And I like that. And I hope they touch up on it soon, I guess. I would really like to see an end, end update. I agree. Though I I feel like that's kind of the boring pick. Mm. But I said the same thing about the cave update. It's like, yeah, everyone wants all that stuff, but you, you yeah. only go there to grab resources and you leave. Uh, unless there's something there, you know. Well, there's stuff in the nether, and we got our stuff and we left. <laughs> well, not not everyone. There's a bunch of builds in the nether. Is there anyone living in the nether? No, no one's living there. Yeah. You could. You got your stuff and you got out. Could live there. You could live in the end, technically. Mm hmm. Anyways, we got a question from Mangoes, and they ask Minecraft was originally called Cave Game. If you were to name the game, what would you name it? <sighs> to me, it seems Ooh. like Block Survival would be the easiest idea. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad they went with Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my you know they really nailed it with Minecraft, but it's it's a lot more than mining and crafting now. You know, it's definitely mm-hmm. evolved from that. Well, and it's a lot more than just survival too. So even my name doesn't work. Yeah, it'd be really hard to pinpoint. You know, the name, give it a name for what exactly it is. Hmm, it's a good question, and I've actually read this question quite a few times and never really thought of of an answer to it <laughs> good job jimbo maybe like square verse or square <laughs> i don't know um cubic world something yeah like cube cube craft uh i don't know i like minecraft yeah i do like minecraft that is an interesting question i'm curious if anyone's listening if they have a better name than minecraft for this game mm-hmm. but yeah so i are we going to move on to the next one? Then I just move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. That's a good question, though. 
Prime Gamer 3133 asks, what mob do you think adds the most gameplay to the game and makes Minecraft more immersive? This is a tough one. Yeah. I'd I'd have to say villagers. Mm-hmm. That would be my first thought. It does add the most gameplay. Yeah. You can do a lot with villagers. A lot. Like mm-hmm. farming, trading. There's builds that have different villagers in them now. It gives the server life or the world life. Then again, most mobs do, but mm-hmm. you see that there's actually like not just an animal or a creature. There's like a living, well, I guess they're all living, but like a person. I don't know. What do you call, What is a villager? Is it a person? I don't know. I'm starting to think of like... I would consider it a person. Like, yeah, yeah. You have like people wandering around that are kind of like you, but not like you. Is, but, is it a... Hmm, sin? Yeah. What what is that thing? They don't even speak my language. Hmm. Hmm. Uh yeah, villagers is definitely the easy one. Mm-hmm. Uh but I have something pre one point nine. I think the answer would be horses. Okay. If you think about it, because th- there's just this random mob that you can walk by and see, and then you could just climb on the back. And now you have a super quick mode of transport. Again, all before 1.9, the Elytra kind of killed horses. We're seeing it come back on Hermitcraft, though. Yeah. They're really trying to push horse gameplay, which is kind of cool, but it also shows the downfall of horses and why everyone quickly jumped to Elytras. Right. There's that. Other than that, I mean, villagers are kind of yeah the easiest thing. Shulkers are really great for what they add gameplay-wise with shulker boxes, but they're not a mob that really makes the game feel more um, immersive. They definitely bring fun to the end compared to Enderman. Mm-hmm. But when you compare anything to villagers, dolphins are really nice in the aquatic update. I love dolphins. Yeah, I was going to say fish in the ocean. Like the fish was always really empty and non-immersive, to be honest. The mm-hmm. fish and the life in the ocean would probably be the second second on my list behind villagers. Yeah. Just for life. But uh, that was a good question, Prime Gamer. Mm-hmm. We got that question from our Discord. And over the next few weeks, we're running a listener survey where you can help shape the future of the show. Here's Stonefigure to help you out with more information. Hi, everyone. I'm Stonefigure. Over the next few weeks, The Withering Effect is running a listener survey to find out what you think of the show. Included are questions about our Patreon, so if you're a Patreon or are interested in joining, you can help shape future perks by following the link in the survey in the show notes. The survey will close at 10pm BST on Saturday, July 24th, 2021, so don't delay and get involved today. Thank you for that stone figure. Remember to get involved with the survey and give us your feedback on the show. I keep forgetting there's a comma here. Yeah, there's not a period. There's there's not a period. (laughs) Give us feedback on the show, our Patreon, and the Discord. That's so funny. (sighs) That script's going to mess me up all the time. You're going to say it in your sleep. If you sleep. (laughs) You know, if you even go to sleep. Dude, I can repeat the outro to the show, including our patrons, in my sleep. Mm Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I'm doing my outro, I'll even like look away and stuff like cocky. Like, yeah, I know, yeah. I know what it says. <laughs> look at me know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of the Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in our Mending Minecraft vote. This week, we asked you to choose between one of three structures for us to discuss and improve. Your choices were Shipwreck, Bastion Remnant, and Ruin Portal. And the winner of Mending Minecraft this week is... Bastion Remnants, probably the newest structure. Yeah, what the heck, guys? To vote for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was uh, pretty interesting. The Remnants had, uh, Bastion Remnants had 33 votes, Shipwreck with 26, and the Ruin Portal with 16. These are all relatively new, actually. Yeah, they are relatively new. I think the Shipwreck would be the oldest, and that was the ocean update. Mm-hmm. Aquatic. Yeah, so. I don't know. A few things I have here on the Bastion Remnants. Bastion Remnants are large castle-like generated structures found in the nether in all the biomes except basalt deltas. 
though it can it can generate outside of assault deltas and protrude into those biomes. I did read about that. Uh, they generate in four distinct variants, each with unique structure and set of loot. Piglins and piglin brutes spawn in these structures on generation, and hoglins also spawn on generation in the bridges and hoglin stable variants. Bastion remnants are only placed to find pig step music disc and snout banner pattern and the magma cube spawner, which is meh, like the pig step though. Other specific loot found in the bastions are ancient debris, netherite scrap, netherite ingot, ancient books, or enchanted books, sorry, <laughs> enchanted books, diamonds, enchanted diamond tools, armor, and weapons, also lodestone, and enchanted golden apples. That's about it. All right. <laughs> Now comes the need to fix the newest thing added to the game, which was not... I had my money on ruined portals. I need to stop thinking I know what you guys are going to vote for, because obviously I don't. Yeah. Um. So, Bastion Remnant. I have not explored Bastion Remnants much. One, because the loot feels like... Most loot in Minecraft feels lackluster to me. That being said, the Bastion Remnant does have some of the best loot in the game next to in cities. Yeah, I think with 117.1 in Bedrock, I read they're upping the loot in Bedrock. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get more loot and more of that loot. Maybe it was there wasn't much to begin with. We don't know. We don't play Bedrock. But yeah, apparently they're going to get a little update to the loot yeah. in the Remnants, but not for Java. Yeah, the fact that you can find Netherite alone is great the armor and the tools and stuff it doesn't once you have a, any kind of villager trading set up that kind of loot becomes worthless to me and that's why i always go i would love to be able to find a sharpness 10 sword somewhere you can't enchant a sharpness 10 sword you could only find it mm -hmm. man would that make that one sword very very awesome oh yeah don't want to die with that yeah, just finding stuff like that and like a Fortune 6. Could you imagine that? I could. You wouldn't want to farm anything. You'd want to fortune all of it. Right. Yeah, with the enchanted armor and weapons and stuff, you get a you get diamond enchanted tools and, you know, weapons and everything, but you're not going to go in there without that stuff. Right. Yeah, you know, so you're going to have it. I wouldn't recommend going in there without enchanted diamond armor. Yeah, brutes and bastions are a formidable opponent. They will kill you. Oh, yeah, in a few hits, maybe two, especially if you don't have diamond. Yeah, here's the thing. They don't drop anything to make the trip worth it. True. Farming bastions is really just looting bastions. There's nothing really there to farm. You mentioned that you could get the magma spawner, but uh, no, why would you want to farm magma cubes? Right. I mean, other than potions, and even then, you're just like, do you really need to make that many potions? You can always make a trading piglin bartering right. farm in that case. You get the potions. You don't need the bottles. You know, you just get the potion. Exactly. So there's a lot of overlap. That being said, pig step and the snout banner are very good loots mm -hmm. to get from bastions. So I give credit to that. Pig step's really rare. Yes. I do like that. I like that it's rare, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll give that. The other thing I think people will agree with me with is some of these bastions are really chopped up. They don't puzzle together very well sometimes, and you can't make sense of where left and right is on these things. So well, There's four different variants, and most of the time I don't know what variant I'm looking at. Right. Because you're only getting so much of the Bastion exposed, so you don't really know what you're walking into. Mm. Which can be fun in some sense, you know, the mystery, but it can be very dangerous. Like you're in the nether, and you don't want to die that easy. Right. You want to have a chance to survive, so you don't just want to walk into an army of pig or piglins or brutes. E exactly. So I I'd like to see them a little bit more put together. I like the idea that they're decaying structures and that they puzzle themselves together. I just don't feel they puzzle themselves together the best sometimes. Sometimes you go in and you're like, okay, I know exactly what that is. I know what that is. I need to go here. And then other times you go and you're like, did somebody already loot this before me and rip down half the building? Yeah, question that a couple times. Right. <laughs> so 
there's that which also means it's very hard to fight off things in the bastion yeah a lot of close quarter combat Mm -hmm. it's hard to get your distance to use your bow which is ideal because they hit really hard they do them brutes man they're nothing to mess with Mm -hmm. that's kind of my fixes to bastions i didn't really feel that they needed a lot of work again when carl gave me these three ideas i went ruin portal obviously but yeah i'm kind of surprised the brutes don't drop anything too special right even if it was just a gold block yeah something yeah just something to up the piglin the regular piglin because mm-hmm. they spawn there and they don't respawn they're pretty special but they don't really leave you anything they're just like the decor they are the challenge to get to this loot that may or may not be worth going in for <laughs> Yeah. See, I thought they did respawn. No, not brutes. Oh. The piglins do, not the brutes. Yeah, well, that's even less of a reason to yeah. farm stuff in the bastion. Yep. If there's no brutes there, someone's been there. Gotcha. Once you take care of them, they're gone. Well, never mind then. But yeah, that kind of concludes my fix. I want to know what you guys think. Jimbo, was there any comments from the Discord? Uh, Nothing really standing out too much. There were some good mentions with the other things to vote on but bastions you know it's a lot of people mention that that this is the newest one so why well how can you fix <laughs> it you know it? a lot of people don't know how to fix it so it's yeah there are a couple issues that we've mentioned that could be looked at but you know it's it's pretty early pretty early to yeah fix it yeah i'm looking uh sky 3012 i see you they also are saying that bastions should be less destroyed yeah they agree with me there yeah, uh, J-Man's mentioning more colors added to it. I think that's the problem with all Minecraft structures is Mojang gets wrapped up in one block type and just goes for it. Yeah, it's pretty much Blackstone. Yeah. That's it. Just Blackstone. Pretty much Blackstone. Uh, but yeah, should we move into the topic this week? Yeah, kind of a smaller topic, but something we can talk about, I guess. And it's we kind of hit this with the nether update a little bit ago before 117 came out and it's stuff we haven't used in 117 yet Mm -hmm. we've talked a little bit earlier about the powdered snow yeah i haven't used powdered snow i haven't really seen a use for it period Mm -hmm. but again just because i'm not using it doesn't mean it's not useful it just means i haven't found use for it like the goat i have not gone out and found a goat in the wild i haven't even thought about getting a goat period uh, to me, the goat would be a decoration in my base more so than a useful item or a useful mob to have. Yeah. The only reason I have a goat is because I found a screaming goat, which is really rare. And I was like, I got to have this guy. Yeah, he's really <laughs> rare. That's the only reason I have a goat. He might just sits there in a boat. You play Minecraft like Pokemon. You got to catch them all. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no, goats have been the back of my mind. I think the goat mob is one of the coolest looking mobs and has some cool features Yeah, definitely. that we've seen in a while. Uh, I really want to know what a goat horn will do. I'm banking slash hoping for it will cause an avalanche, but yeah. who knows? Probably not. <laughs> hoping it destroys all powdered snow in the area. Oh, how mean would that be? So what, set up a stray farm? You just go over there blowing your goat's horn oh, all the time? yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Feel my wrath. Like any falling any falling block. Yeah. It would just destroy it. Man, that'd be an OP thing. Oh, could you imagine a goat's horn in a skulk sensor? Ooh. It, it would send the deep dark into a frenzy. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's, ooh, maybe it's a weapon against a warden. That's why oh, they're- Oh, man. Oh, we're getting on to something. Oh, snap. But yeah, the powdered snow isn't really anything. Uh, yeah. Well, we moved on from that. We're talking about goats. Uh, yeah. We're on goats right now. Yeah. Goats are cool. If you could ride a goat, uh, I'd be all about some of that. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. And uh, have that jumping ability. Oh, yeah. Maybe give you the, maybe give you that jump. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Maybe goats can't jump for distance, just height. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. You don't get much. Maybe just a one block or two, mm-hmm. but the vertical. There you go. Yeah, it'd be fun. Anyways, what's some stuff you haven't really taken advantage of in 117? I haven't really... I've collected most stuff, but I, I haven't messed with the cauldrons. I know you have a 
an area where the dripstone fills the cauldrons that you have. Mm -hmm. And dripstone at that, I haven't messed with those much. I've collected them. Yeah, because I got mine from you. <laughs> yeah, I got a bunch. I'm always out looking for different stuff. But uh, yeah, the the our I think our problem is we we already have our base established. Most yeah. servers and worlds they've already started over. They started from scratch, and they can actually play with this stuff. They can find a use for the powdered snow and mm -hmm. all these other farms. I already have my farms in place. I knew where they were going. I had my everything mapped out and then here comes 117 yeah i like i love the blocks and i would definitely have used them if i'd have known they were coming but you just you didn't know so yeah that's pretty much why i haven't messed with any of those others hence why my dome was designed the way it was thinking ahead yeah that being said i put a glow squid farm in a warm motion so that was dumb i did i was able to make a glow squid tank that was a lot of fun and I did grab some axolotls, but I haven't really yeah. played with them much. I would like to. I would like to take an army of them and go conquer a <laughs> a guardian. Yeah, a temple, ocean temple. Yeah, monument, ocean monument. That sounds like it would be a fun episode. We might need yeah. to team up on that. I'm all for it because I haven't messed with a guardian temple all season. I did one on a stream. Me and Croc went because I needed sponges for the mm -hmm. swamp, but that's about it. Yeah, I'm game. That that sounds like a lot of fun. I'll even break out the trident I have that's being collecting dust in my yeah. ender chest. Uh, mine's got a few cobwebs on it. Let's see if I can enchant it or something. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about the new seasons and stuff, and I can't help but mention, I've had this new base idea in my head for a while now. It's like, oh, all I want to do is build this sucker. It's one of those ultimate starter base type bases. Uh, think, I don't know if a lot of people remember my own survival, or I refer to it as Project Moss, but it was my series between season two and season three of Ripple Effect. Mm -hmm. And it definitely fits, fits that building style. And I've actually been considering going back and doing episodes in that world again, because it hasn't been updated since 116 came out. Yeah, since before. 116 right yeah thought about like hey just pick a really freaky texture pack something that you're not used to seeing and try building with it to see how different you can be but then i realized all the builds i have in that world right now work with my one texture pack I use yeah you don't i haven't seen too many different textures for the deep slate besides i mean how could you retexture that really like the tile yeah it's a really cool block. You've played with that block. I that's another thing I haven't got to play with much is that deep slate. Oh, deep slate's so nice. I actually Ugh. was able to use some of the is it the smooth basalt or the smelted mm -hmm. basalt? I think it's smooth basalt. Yeah, the polished is the other kind. Yeah, I was able to, I was able to put some in my tower around just to see what it would look like. It pretty much mm -hmm. looks the same as the regular basalt, the side of it those textures all look the same. So I don't know if I'm going to exchange all those, but yeah, the deep slate, man, I never got around to use those. And I uh, kind of have plans for them next season. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but that's going to have to wait. Never got to play with them yet. Yeah. You made a pretty cool wall out of the deep slate tiles, though. Or is it just deep slate in general? Where at? In the villager farm. Oh, front or back. Is it both? Isn't it both? Yeah, the, the back side of it felt kind of plain to me. The entrance is literally just the tile with polished. Mm -hmm. uh, in the back, I tried to do a randomized texturing, and it's okay. It doesn't blend as well like stone and andesite and cobble. Those all blend relatively easily. When it comes to the deep slate tile, everything has a harsh line with it when you try to blend it, so it doesn't blend as well, but... Tile by itself is such a beautiful block. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, you're saying it's like your favorite now, and I'm I'm yeah. probably there too. Mm -hmm. It does look really cool. Lodestone, extremely beautiful block, next to impossible to build with, but that was my favorite for a while. Andesite's my general go-to favorite block, but Deep Slate, oh, it's taken over. I love some Deep Slate. And you get a lot of it. Yes. There's plenty of it. Mm -hmm. Especially when... 
118 comes out and you'll be doing some mining in that area and it's just everywhere mm-hmm. have you got to play with much of the moss a little bit um like you said my gate has some moss on it but that's kind of it i'm on a little island so i don't have a lot of room to do terrain foliage if that makes sense i did a really cool thing with the moss box i didn't record it <laughs> okay. i probably should have recorded something but I was mining for diamonds. I I have these diamond beacons around my base, and I I need these diamond blocks now. It's already in my head. So I went around, Mm -hmm. and I put a beacon far away from my base to mine out at Y11, and uh, I put moss blocks down. I I dug out what I could until I couldn't insta-mine anymore. anymore. Mm -hmm. So I put a moss block down, and I mossed all the stone. And then I instamined that moss with the, uh, what is it, the hoe. Mm-hmm. And I was able, it, it will convert any stone into the moss block. So your ores stay ores. So you're able to mine ev- out everything and expose all these ores by doing this method. It was really cool. I didn't find anything too special. Like I didn't find any diamonds this way. I mean, I pretty much found a, a ton when I was insta mining. Yeah, it is a really cool way to mine if you don't have that beacon and you have moss blocks. You need bone meal, of course, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, we see a lot of people digging with moss blocks now. Mm-hmm. So that is that is something new to mess with. But no, I haven't messed with moss blocks a lot. I think it was a very pretty block. Yeah, and I really like how the azalea bushes and stuff come up from them. I think those are the, some of the best flowers in the game now. Yeah, I don't use too many flowers. Mm-hmm. I did. I did underest the azalea tree. I didn't. I haven't played with it much, but I did grow quite a few. And because I'm in the swamp, they really stand out. You know, you don't yeah. get that dingy green, that dark green. It's bright. It's vibrant, and it it looks really cool. And I didn't know it had that ability until I saw it in the game. So it's definitely something I underestimated. Was the tree at least the leaves? I mean the yeah. the the logs are still oak. That didn't change. They do generate a little different. It's not generated like an oak tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You you get the rooted dirt underneath. I haven't even dug any of that up yet, or the roots. Yeah, I haven't even looked at rooted dirt. Yeah, again, you know our bases are kind of. You could. You, I guess you could use some for landscaping, but mm-hmm. landscaping's out of the question for me. Yeah, my base has very limited landscaping, and any kind of landscaping that I do will be 100% artificial. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, is there anything else we've we've missed on 117? The ores? Copper? I have not messed with copper at all. I've collected a bunch, but I know, again. I haven't mined a single thing of copper. You haven't mined one ore? I haven't mined one ore of copper. I have three copper ingots, and all of those were for me fighting drowned at my base. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I remember you mentioned you couldn't find any, but still. Yeah. Nothing came up, huh? Nope. Uh, and for me to go mining in a 117 area, it that's, that's a 30-minute travel time just on a good day. And our server, we've been talking about, it's not running good. I don't like leaving my base. Yeah. Half my base does not load correctly right now, so I don't travel. So to travel to 117 for stuff is just, uh, it's atrocious. I have to wait till basically no one's on before I can go anywhere. And even if it's just you on, you're loading new trunk chunks. So yeah. it's going to be a little laggy in those areas, at least when it's generating in. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you might hit some spots where it's you know struggling to, to load in. Exactly. And that can be frustrating. Very much. So, yeah, I haven't messed with copper, though I kind of wanted to use some lightning rods in my glow squid silo, but I I didn't have enough copper to even craft one, so. I was able to make a spyglass. Those are pretty cool. Again, I have, I've had Optifine. Now that we updated a mm-hmm. 117.1, the spyglass is definitely useful. I guess that brings us to the amethyst geodes. Mm-hmm. You were able to find one of those, right? I have found multiple, and they're not worth it to me right now. Right. And again, this is because I have to travel to 117. 
but the amount of time it takes for them to grow clusters and the fact that I have to sit there and wait for them to grow clusters. Kind of hard to farm. Right. And what's sad is it's a very useful thing right now because Winter made the data pack for our server where we can actually get the light block. And that's one amethyst crystal, I think shard or something like that, whatever it's called, surrounded by eight glow lichen. And we get the light block. Oh, my God. Which is awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's in it's in the server. I would use them today. I'm getting those. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's one thing I didn't mess with. I AFK'd for like six hours inside an amethyst geode to make sure I had enough crystal shards or whatever they're called just for those light blocks. And I didn't get 18 stacks. I got maybe 15. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I was thinking, how convenient would it be if these crystals popped off with water flow? You know, instead of like super convenient, even, you know, without pistons or something, it would be so much better if water could break these things. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind, you know, the inconvenience of it accidentally breaking it. <laughs> yeah. Or the, the headache of putting all these pistons around it. Yeah. Now, obviously, when we update the server, there'll be a chance for a geo to be around my base. So it'll be loaded more often. So farming it wouldn't be as bad. Yeah, it might be worth it. Yeah, right now, going off of our experiences and the fact that I have to travel to Carl's base and then I have to travel another 10 minutes from Carl's base to get to a geode, ugh, it's not worth the time and effort. It was okay last week because I would just set my guy out during a hockey game. Period would end. I'd come over and I'd mine all the clusters and then go back, watch hockey, and repeat and repeat and repeat. But yeah, no, I... I I have very limited amount of time. I don't want to spend my time AFKing a geode. Yeah, especially if there's none nearby. Right. That also brings us to tinted glass. Yes. I was real excited for tinted glass, but again, can't really use it. <laughs> Not yet. I mean, unless you have like a spawner nearby you want to hook up eventually. I really like tinted glass, and I think next season I will use a lot of tinted glass. But this season, uh, it won't get used probably at all because I'm saving all of my amethyst shard crystal things for light blocks. Mm. I have plans for the amethyst block mm -hmm. next season. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil okay. anything. I really wish you could silk touch the budding block, though. Yeah. At least give us the, the water breaking. Yeah. That would help. Yeah. But we'll we'll see next season. We'll revisit this to see if geodes being closer to home make them worth it. I think they will, mm -hmm. but I, I can't say for sure. Yeah, it's hard for us to know as of right now because we're so far away mm -hmm. from the 117 chunks. It's kind of inconvenient to go there. You kind of got to set up shop in a new base to really dive into it. Yeah. But I mean, like the mobs and some of the blocks you can bring back home, but the geodes that's one thing you just can't mm -hmm. and even copper like i guess you could farm the copper but to get it naturally in the ground you gotta mine it and you do get a lot you do get a lot of these new ores i'm pretty happy about that when you go mining the ores are pretty abundant now that's pretty cool yeah i haven't even tried to do the fortuning on the new ores yet or the old ores i should say the new fortuning on old ores yeah you get you get a good bit but I think that's going to do it for the show today. Before I have Jimbo read us out, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting the show. Our milk level patrons are Omni, Chief Big Bear, Croc, Deadwalker, Fragile Rock, Obeep, Stone Figure, and Viper's Tuna. If you too would like to get access to exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each month, please consider joining at patreon.com slash the withering effect. And if you like the show, you can share with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, follow us, or if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at thewitheringeffect.com, tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links will be in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer Carl. He helps make sure the show ends up where it should be, and the amazing music you hear in the intro and outro is created by the one and only Decoy. Everyone's social media info can be found in the show notes. You guys have been awesome as always. Thank you so much for getting withered with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys.